Lord, everybody. It is good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. We welcome you to New Vision for Christ Ministries Wednesday night Bible study. We are here to break the bread of life one more time and go into the study of the Lord's words and the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank God for this opportunity that he has given each and every one of us, amen, to be able to study the word of God. We know the Bible says for us to study the Show to ourselves approves a workman that needed not be ashamed, but rightfully dividing the word of truth. This is truly a day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Let us go before the Lord tonight, and our scripture is coming from the book of Zechariah. The book of Zechariah, Zechariah, the fourth chapter beginning with the fourth and reading through the ninth verses today. Our study comes from the book of Zechariah, the fourth chapter, beginning at the fourth verse and reading through the ninth verses today. And the scripture reads, So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these things be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he answered and spoke unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel, that thou should become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts have sent me unto you. The word of God is always a blessing to those who hear it, understand it, and are obedient unto it. If I would have a title for the study tonight, it is, That Which Is Greater Won't Stop Your Greatness. That Which Is Greater Won't Stop Your Greatness. All of us realize, amen, that God has things for us to do. All of us, for us, God has a purpose and a plan for our lives. Therefore, all of us have the ability and the potential to walk in the greatness that God shall attach to our lives in reference to what he purposes and assigns us to do. Here we have this situation. The situation is this, that God is calling Zerubbabel, and he's placing him on assignment. Now, here it is that Zerubbabel, he has come back from exile from Babylon, and he is appointed and promoted to be the governor of Judah. And when he becomes the governor of Judah, God places this assignment on Zerubbabel, saying, I want you to be one of the leaders to be in charge of building the temple once again in Jerusalem. One of the leaders that will be in charge with building the temple in Jerusalem. So as we read these scriptures, amen, God is giving Zerubbabel, amen, through the prophet Zechariah, he's telling him and giving him instructions. You know, it's a blessing when God puts you on assignment and then God speaks unto you and tells you some of the terms and conditions and he tries to reassure us a lot of times, amen, that he's with us, he's going to move on our behalf and he speaks these things to us that we will walk by faith and not by sight and so that we would 
go forth and be encouraged and therefore if we are encouraged in the Lord then we can be courageous amen so he tells him these words forth and, and I want you to pay attention to the words that God speaks to Zerubbabel before he starts the project so he can hold on to these words so he can hold on to them and believe that God is like we say sometimes he will make a way where there seemeth to be no way amen and that we have nothing to be concerned about and nothing to worry about because we're on assignment from God and God will be the one that will orchestrate the plan and carry out the purpose all our job is to do is be willing and obedient unto that which God has told us that he desires for us to do. Now, one of the first things, amen, I want you to pay attention to is that God sends an angel down to talk to the prophets so that they will get the instructions, amen, directly from heaven. You know, it's good to know when when you are getting your directions and instructions, amen, straight from heaven. So God sends an angel to talk to him. And when God sends an angel to talk to him, the angel asks him, says, do you know what I'm saying? And I like, I like uh, Zerubbabel's response. He says, no, I don't really understand what you're saying. A lot of times when God is speaking to us, amen, we ought to let God know, say, say look at here, Lord. Amen. I hear what you're saying, but I, I, I don't quite understand, amen, all of what you mean when you say, amen. It's not, it, it's not good for us, amen, to tell God yes when we don't really understand what God is telling us to do. So I like his response when the angel says, do you know what I'm talking about? Do you know what I'm saying? And then he says, well, no, I don't. I, I, I don't know. And then the sixth verse, he says, then he answered and spake unto me, saying, this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. So the angel gives him this message, and he says, look, he says, I want you to remember this through the process that you're going to go through. It's not going to be by might. It's not going to be by power. But everything is in the hands of God, and God will do two things. This is what he's telling him. He will manifest, and he will move by his spirit. Be not dependent on might and power. When I looked at uh, my commentaries it said that the angel was trying to tell him, do not depend on your own intellect, neither depend on manpower, neither depend on the weapons of man. Do not depend on your intellect, do not depend on man's power, and do not depend, amen, on the weapons. So this is not going to be something when you run into opposition that you are going to try to fight within your own means. He said the spirit of God will manifest in reference to when anything tried to oppose you. I wish that we as believers, we would keep this in the forefront of our minds. If God sends you on assignment and then God says, I'm going to move by my spirit, amen, when the battle comes to you because of the assignment that I placed you on, amen, wait on the spirit of God to move. One thing I found out about the spirit of God, the spirit of God will bring the presence of God, and the spirit of God also will manifest God's desires in reference to what God has called us to do. Amen. That's why the Bible says that we should be led by the Spirit of God. When you're led by the Spirit of God, it gives you a certain level of comfort where you can exercise your faith and say, I know that the Spirit of God is going to move. Oftentimes when God has called me on assignments, I've had to tell myself, all I have to do is wait on the Spirit of God to begin to move. You say, well, Pastor Green, 
amen, in reference to the Spirit of God moving. How does it move? Well, sometimes the Spirit of God will speak to you. Sometimes the Spirit of God will just step in and begin to deal with the circumstances and the situations and the people involved. God can move physical things out the way. God can alter things, amen. The Spirit of God has the capability of manifesting in any way uh, that it, it, it can in order for the plan that God has spoke to you, amen, to be exercised and for you to be successful in it. We ought to have the mindset when God puts us on assignment, amen, that we already really have the victory. All we have to do is believe that the Spirit of God is going to lead us and the Spirit of God is going to move and manifest on our behalf because we're being obedient unto God. So we try to reassure him and say, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. The seventh verse, he comes along and says, Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel, that thou should become a plain? Now, the angel says, this is another thing I want to tell you. Amen. You are going to come up against opposition. Look at what the angel tells him. He says, surely God has placed you on assignment. He says, but look, just because God places you on assignment does not mean that you are not going to have opposition. So the angel says, amen, you should, you should know that opposition is coming, and when opposition does come, it should not frighten you, nor should it intimidate you. I find that oftentimes when God does place us on assignment, Amen. And opposition comes, and you say, Pastor Green, you know, I can only handle so much opposition. Amen. When it comes to me doing the will of God, well, my Bible says the Lord will put no more on you than, than you could bear. Come on, somebody. And we ought, to know, we ought to be quoting those scriptures that we always quote when we're in the middle of assignment, then we run into opposition. You know, we ought to be saying, well, I can do all things through Christ. Amen. That strengthens me. See, these... These are the things, amen, that should boost your faith up once you're on assignment. But here the angel is guaranteeing that you're going to have opposition. I want you to realize what the angel tells him. The angel says it's not just going to be um, opposition, but it is going to be great opposition. He says you're going to come to a point in this assignment where you're going to come up against great opposition. I'm telling you today, amen, when you're on assignment from God and by God, when this great opposition comes and it plants itself in front of you and it can be intimidating at times, we are not to pay attention, amen, to the odds, amen. A lot of times in the world, you know, they take statistical data, and they go by the statistical data, and then they weigh everything out. But sometimes in God, because we are on assignment of God, our obligation is to walk by faith and not by sight. He says, great opposition is coming. Do not be fearful and do not be intimidated. And he completes it, and he says, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings crying, grace, grace unto it. He's saying in the midst of being opposed, amen, you should have the attitude where you say, I am going to complete this mission. I am going to complete this assignment because nothing can oppose God. This is what I'm saying tonight. He says, I want you to have in your mindset that whatever opposition comes against you, it is never greater than the God you serve. It is never mightier than the God you serve. It is never more powerful than the God you serve. It, is, it does not have more power than the God you serve. So 
when oppositions come, you should look at that opposition and in your mindset and in the depths of your soul, you should already be convinced that whatever is opposing me, it is already defeated. This is why Jesus tried to teach us, even in the New Testament, in St. Matthew, the 21st chapter, you know, when he, when he, called, when he goes by and then he uh, curses the fig tree and the Bible says when they come back through, they find out that the fig tree, amen, is dried up from the root and it is dead because Jesus came upon the fig tree and it didn't have any fruit upon it, so he cursed it. And then St. Matthew 21, 21, Jesus tells them, says, look, you ought to know that you have the power to speak to a mountain and tell that mountain, be thou removed and cast <coughs> into the sea and it shall obey you. He's already telling us when we are obedient unto God and we are on assignment to God, for God, there is nothing that opposes us that God does not have the power to move out of our way. Now, for all of you who have had the experience of being in a mountainous country or being in the midst of mountainous terrain, it can be really intimidating. It can be really intimidating. You know, when you're traveling in a car and you're traveling along the mountainsides and you're looking over into the depths of how high mountains can be and, and how majestic they can be and what an opposition they could be. And this is why he uses a mountain as an example because a mountain, if you are intimidated by the mountain, the mountain can stop your progress, amen, and make you believe that this is impossible. And see, this is why he says mountain, because it can be so daunting until your flesh and your carnal mind will begin to say, I don't know whether this is going to work out tonight. God has the power, he says, to make a mountain a plain. You know, there's some scriptures in the Bible that I read, and, and some, of, some of those scriptures are, you know, in Isaiah, the 40th chapter, and the fourth verse, it says, He shall make the crooked way straight, bring the mountains down low, and exalt the valleys. Now, this is what God has the power to do. Take a mountain and remove it out of the way. He'll take crooked ways, and then he'll make them straight. He'll take valleys, and he has the power and authority to exalt valleys. When you're serving a God like this, nothing should intimidate you. Nothing should intimidate you. And you know what the problem is? A lot of times in the world, we seem to always have an atmosphere of competition. When it comes to us looking for jobs especially, amen, and trying to get our foot in the door of some corporation or some company or some business or just to start a business of your own. Oftentimes, especially in America where we're very modern and very industrialized, amen, the thing that you desire to do, there's someone else that, that, that has that same product. There's someone else that has that same idea. So in America, there is a lot of competition on a lot of fronts, amen, in reference to us trying to better ourselves, in reference to us trying to be uh, successful in, in a certain area of business for us who are entrepreneurs. And, you know, because the, the, the subject of competition is in almost every aspect of our lives, you can be intimidated by the opposing thing or by the opposing company or by the opposing people. But if God be for you, then who could be against you? Come on, somebody. If we know the word of God and we believe the word of God, amen, and the word of God says we're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus that loves us. When we look at ourselves as God looks at us, then there should be no doubt. 
There should be no fear. There should be no unbelief that can lodge itself in our hearts to the degree that we lose sight of who God is and can be and will be in our lives if we let him. The angel says, you should ought to celebrate because you know that you will complete this mission. You will complete this assignment, but you're going to run up against great opposition. I remember, I, I'm reminded of the times in my life, amen, where even on my secular job, where people told me, they says, well, you know, we... We never had a, a person of color in certain positions on the job. And um, I say, well, you know, I believe that I could do this particular job. Uh, I believe I have the knowledge and win, uh, wisdom and capabilities and talents. Amen, what I could do the job. And the person told me, says, well, we never had a people uh, of color, amen, in this position on the job. And I've been here, they told me, for about 30 years. But because the Spirit of God was unctioning me and telling me, hey, when you talk to somebody in the upper echelon of the company, let them know, amen, that you would like, it when it opens up, you would like to apply for the position. Let me tell you something. When God puts you on assignment, never be intimidated. And, and let me tell you what happens when God puts you on assignment. The owner of the company was walking around one day, and I was working in a department, and he stopped, and he was a very um, personable person. He knew people's first name who worked on the job, and they had over 100 employees, but he was very personal. He would walk the floor many times and talk to the workers, amen. He was a very good owner. And, and, and a very good boss. And so he stopped me one day and he asked me a question. He said, do you want to work in this particular position for the rest of your life? I told him, I said, no, I don't want to work in this position for the rest of my life. And then he asked me, he says, well, uh, 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 where do you want to work? I say, I want to work in, 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 in a department in the company on the floor that pays the highest amount of money. He said, oh, you do, do you, Michael? I say, well, yes, I do. He said, well, that's in the machine department. I say, oh, it's in the machine department? I say, well, well okay, that's where I want to be. That's where I want to be. If that's where the money is, where the most money is being made, then that's where I want to work. Now, the owner of the company, he goes back into the office and he tells the shop foreman and the shop supervisor that he wants to transfer me into that department. Amen? He, they want to, he tells them to transfer me in the machine department. Let me tell you something. When you're on assignment by God, I believe what the angel was telling Zerubbabel. No matter what opposition is in the way and no matter how great it is, you've got to believe that God will make it happen because it's according to what the Spirit does, not by might and not by power. All you have to do is watch how the Spirit is moving. Now, here it is. The owner of the company tells them to transfer me. They transfer me. I stay in that department, and they tell me that they have never had a person of color even in the department. And so this, this, this man takes me up on his wings, amen. This white guy takes me up on his wing. He trains me how to run the machinery. He trains me in the business of how to operate the department. This is what God will do when you're on assignment from God. What you must realize, when God places you on assignment, God is trying to make people pay attention to who he is in you. Listen to what I'm saying. God, when God begins to elevate you and God begins to put you on assignment, a lot of times God 
is trying to expose you and give you greater, greater exposure to people around about you so that God can move through you, that God can be glorified in what he does in your life. No matter what people say that you cannot do, no matter if people believe you cannot do things, no matter if, if people talk down to you, it does not make any difference, amen. In a lot of cases I found out how much certification you have, how much education you have. When you read your Bible, you will find out that God has the capability and the power to bring people out of obscurity into notoriety, just like he did David, just like he did King Saul, amen, just like he did the apostles and the disciples of that time in the New Testament. He, he went and he called people who were in obscurity pretty much, and he brought them into notoriety. I believe that in this day and this time and in this hour, God is bringing people out of obscurity and into notoriety. This is why, listen to me tonight, this is why God is placing his people on assignment. This is why God is taking you to higher heights and deeper depths in him. This is why God is causing people to notice you more. And God is causing people to come to you. Amen. I love it when God moves in the way that you're not going out trying to make things happen, but God is sending people to you, and, and, and they are asking you, amen, do you want to be this, or do you want to be that, and what is your dreams, and what is your aspirations, and, and what is your desires, and what do you want to accomplish in life? A lot of times, God will send people to you because People he has chosen, they are supposed to assist you, amen, in these areas of success that God has ordained for your life. So all of you who have been experiencing lately that God, you, uh, you seem to be repositioning me. You seem to, amen, be giving me assignments, God. You seem to be doing unusual things in my life. It is because... God is beginning to move by his spirit. And God is beginning to take you to greater levels, greater levels of life. And you know what? Because God is trying to take you to a greater level in life, he's trying to, like the Bible says, amen, he's trying to take the tail sometimes and make it into the head. And God can do it. He can make the last become first. This is what your Bible says that God has the power to do. All of you who are suffering from low self-esteem, you need to get yourself together, amen, and begin to look at yourself as a child of God. And if you are a child of, child of God, knowing that you are a child of God, then God can really do anything. He can take you from the bottom. He can put you on the top. <coughs> if God is speaking to you to open up a business, notice what I'm saying, if God is speaking to you to open up a business, and I know a lot of times people say, well, Pastor Green, we're in the middle of a pandemic, and, you know, the financial status in a, on a lot of different levels are very unstable. Let me tell you something. If God is speaking to you to go into business, then you are already successful. You, you God has already made a way. God has already cleared a path. Amen. God has already gone before you. God is already in the front of you. God has already made a way where there seemed to be no way. God has already, amen, positioned himself that when the obstacles come and when the hindrances come and when your enemies come and they try to block and stop you and try to impair you and try to impede your, pro your progress, the devil is a liar. We've got to learn how to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. And look not to the left, neither look to the right, but looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher 
of our faith. God is trying to push you out front so that he could be glorified in your life. This is why the Bible says, let your light so shine that men may see your good works that they may glorify the Father in heaven. We are being put on assignment. We are being taken from one level to the next. God is pushing and pressing us forward in order for us to be those living epistles and that living testimony that God has in the earth. The only way that people can know God is through we as believers that God lives through us and in us. This is why the Bible says, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. His presence is in us that we might manifest who he is and how powerful he is and teach people the power of his love and teach people the God's character and teach people, amen, who God is and what he has the ability to do. You are being placed on assignment. It's, uh, it's time for the believers in Christ to begin to answer the call and not be intimidated by things that are greater than we are. Come on, somebody. I had somebody last month tell me that, you know, what well, God is speaking to me to go into business. And the business was well, the type of business that there are other businesses doing the same thing. And they begin to talk about the competition. Oh, well, you know, uh, uh, God is telling me to do it, but there's so much competition. I asked them, I said, what you worrying about the competition for? Who can't compete against God? Who can't compete against God? If God tell, is telling you to open up the business, then there is no competition. It's the same thing the angel was trying to tell Zerubbabel. Say, look, there was a great mountain that's going to come before you, but God is going to take care of the mountain. Let me tell you, let me tell you this this way. It's not your responsibility to move the obstacles out the way. It's not your responsibility to take our time so busy fighting your competition and fighting your enemies till you don't invest enough time, energy, and effort in your business. Sometimes your focus is skewed. That's the problem. You're worrying about what your competitors are doing instead of building your brand and building your business and being the best you could be and making your product or your service amen, the best it can be, and operate in excellence, then allow God, amen, to move by his spirit and promote you. You got the best promoter in the universe. If God is telling you to do something, who can promote better than God? Who has the greatest amount of resources than God? Amen. I'm reminded of something that God told Zerubbabel in the book of Haggai, the second chapter, and the eighth and ninth verses. God tells Zerubbabel, he says, look, let me tell you something, Zerubbabel, why you're on this assignment. God says, all the gold is mine. And he says, all the silver is mine. God tells him, do not worry about how you are going to finance it. There's enough gold and silver that I have, amen, for you to completely build the temple. I'm going to give you the means to trade with so that when you need the raw materials to build a temple, you are going to have it. Read it for yourself in the book of Haggai, amen, the second chapter, the eighth and ninth verse, where God is telling him, do not be concerned as to how you're going to finance this thing. If I told you to start it, then you have the ability, amen, to finish it. Glory to God. Glory to God. And, 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 and verse, nine, verse 9 says, you shall be able to build a sure foundation, and you're going to be able to finish the temple. Now look, now look, God says, I told you all this. Because I want you to be sure, I want you to be sure that I'm with you all the way. This is what God 
has told him through all these things. He says, look, I'm going to give you everything that's needed to finish this assignment. I'm going to be there with you. He says, when great opposition comes, I'm going to, I will defeat the opposition for you. He says, my spirit will move. He says, every time you think that you've met some kind of a hitch or some kind of glitch or some kind of holdup or some kind of disappointment, he says, my spirit will move and my spirit will manifest, amen, and you're not going to, it's not going to be an issue. I need someone to get that in your spirit that me, while I'm on assignment with God, there is no issue because God has taken care of all the issues. When you operate in that kind of mindset, do you know how much peace and comfort that's going to give you? Amen. In having the assurance, amen, that God, you have guaranteed that I'm going to be successful in this assignment. I'm going to be successful in this business. I'm going to be successful in this venture, God, because you told me to do it, God. I, I'm not doing it out of my own self. I'm doing it because you have ordained this for my life. Therefore, God, my heart will never be troubled about it, and my heart will never be afraid. I will never be intimidated because the blessings of the Lord make it rich and add it no sorrow. Lord, if you have spoke to me to do these things, amen, there's no way that I am going to have doubt and fear and unbelief rule my life in reference to it. The devil is a liar. I'm telling you today, those of you, and I know we're living in a very uncertain environment at this time, and I know that you, you have heard this over and over and over. These are uncertain times, and we're living in uncertain environments. Well, let me tell you something about the God we serve. Amen. The Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. It means he does not change. God is the same God in Genesis as he is in the book of Revelation. Come on, somebody. He's everything he says he is. He can do all that he says he can do. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. God, God is positioning us as the body of Christ to begin to do work, two types of work that God is calling us to do in this hour. He's calling us to do kingdom work, and he's calling us to do work in our lives in reference to businesses, careers, come on somebody, and all these other aspects of life, amen? Because when you are successful in doing kingdom business and you're successful secularly, and this is Bible, amen, when you are successful in your secular life, amen, and you're successful in doing kingdom things also, then it causes people to be attracted to God. When you as a person that has a successful personal life, and then when people ask you, what do you attribute your, your success to? And then you say, it's because of God. It's because God is in my life. It's because I'm saved. It's because Jesus is my Lord and Jesus is my Savior. It is because Jehovah God is my God. And him do I trust and in him do I serve. Then you can give the testimony, amen. I'm not just a church person, amen, who just goes to church. And the church is the only thing I got to brag on is that I pray for people and and that I'm in this ministry, and I'm in that ministry, and I'm a Sunday school teacher, and I'm an elder, and I'm a deacon, or I'm an evangelist, apostle, prophet, pastor, and teacher. I'm over this program. I drive the bus for the church. That's all well and good. Go ahead and do your kingdom work. But if people cannot see that God moves on your life besides what you do for the kingdom, it is not attractive to them. 
This is why there's scriptures in the Bible where it says, Beloved, I wish that thou mayest prosper and be in hell, even as your soul prospers. We as Christians, we've got to cover the spectrum of prosperity. Amen. Not just be prosperous in doing kingdom work, but be prosperous, amen, in the world. Amen. Now, I know some of you say, well, the Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For he that loveth the things of the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Let me tell you something. There's a reason why I say to love not. It didn't say you shouldn't have the things in the world. He said, do not fall in love with things in the world. This is why Jesus said you can't, you can't uh, love two masters. You got to love one and you got to hate the other. Amen. You can't be the servant of two masters. You can't love God and you can't love mammon, which is money, at the same time. He says, now use it. What we should do, we should take the things in the world and we should use them to our advantage and know how to market know how to trade, know how to gather money, make money, and make a profit, and we should know how to invest and invent. Listen to me today. And this is what God is talking about. We must, if we would cover the whole spectrum of prosperity, the gospel would be more attractive to people who are in the secular world. Come on, somebody. We got to let them know that God is able to bless me in business too. Amen. God is able to bless me in other ways other than me doing church stuff and kingdom stuff. There is a brand new, brand new way that God is moving. And God is assigning the body of Christ to do things in these uncertain times. I want you to read your Bible really good these days, and I want you to study your Bible, you'll find that even when they were in desert and famine conditions, that God moved upon the circumstances, even in famines and even in desert places, where God provided means and resources. Do not be intimidated by the time. I hope you listen to me tonight. Be not intimidated by the times. Amen. Because one thing I'm finding out, I'm finding out that people in the world, business people and people of means and people of substance, you see that stock market? The stock market is still going up. Yeah, it went back down. It went down for a while, but when you look at the stock market, the stock market has gone back up. I believe before the pandemic, it was like 28,000, something like that. Now, it's all the way back up to 26. You say, well, Pastor Crane, what point are you trying to make? I'm trying to make this point. Here we have people in the world, and a lot of them don't serve God and don't even believe in God, even in uncertain times, and in these times where the financial structure, amen, has been shaken. They are still spending, they are still building, and they are still investing. Why Christian is acting like the world has already come to an end. Let me tell you something. Read the book of St. Matthew, the 24th chapter, when Jesus said it's going to be nation against nation and kingdom and kingdom, and he was going to be giving us last day signs. At the end of Matthew 24, he says, but the end is not yet. Let me tell you something, Christian. Stop acting like the world has already come to an end. Invest in what God tells you to invest in. Build what God is telling you to build. Start the businesses that God is telling you to start. God is not, has not stopped moving yet in reference to worldly prosperity for his people. This is why the Spirit of God is telling me, preach on assignment because I'm sending people out in assignments so that I can pour into their lives. Yes, these are probably the, the beginnings of the last days. Yes, these are uncertain times for a lot of people, but for us, 
I know in whom I have believed, the Bible says. And I know that he's able to keep that which I have entrusted unto him against that day. What day? Any day. Any day. If it's a famine, I'm still going to trust him. If it's a flood, I'm still going to trust him. If it's a disaster, I'm still going to trust him. If it's a virus, I'm still going to trust him. If it's a pandemic, I'm still going to trust him. Amen. If the banks run out of money, I'm still going to trust God. If I don't have any food, I'm still going to trust God. Come on, somebody. Our trust is in our God. He's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above more than we could ask or even think for the power that works inside of us. The reason it don't work, because you ain't working it. That's the reason it's not working, because you won't work it. It's not that God has stopped speaking. It's not that God has stopped moving. It's that believers have stopped believing. We got to get back on track. We got to get back on track. We got to get back on assignment. Come on, somebody. We got to get back on the right path. Say, what is the path? To be led by the Lord and to follow God and to be instructed by him so that he can manifest in our lives, so that he can bring us wealth and riches and prosperity, so that we can sow back into the kingdom, so that his kingdom can become greater. If you broke, if all Christians broke and poor, you can only build God's kingdom with as much money and prosperity that you experience. Oh, I know somebody looking at me crazy tonight, but you better listen to what I'm saying. God is glorified when you have something. Something more than just the word of God and something more than just the Holy Ghost and something more than just a church position. God is telling us that he wants to do more in our lives in reference to prosperity. You say, well, Pastor, uh, uh, Pat Screen, are you turning into a prosperity preacher? Well, I'm not going to turn into a prosperity preacher like they did about 10 years ago. I don't think we need to go down that road again. Amen. Well, you give me $50 and I guarantee you $50,000. We ain't going down that road. Come on, somebody. We're talking about God-like prosperity. We're not talking about man-made prosperity. We don't need, we don't want a prosperity that somebody has conjured up in order to make money that the Holy Ghost can't even sanction. We don't want to have a process to make money that make people wonder about, amen, the technique that we're using in reference to the God that can do it. We don't want the world to be questioning our integrity in reference to how we raise money or how we make money. Come on, somebody. Christians got to get to the place Amen. Well, people feel like the way we do things is a way that represents integrity and honesty so that they can trust the God that we serve that is doing the work that God is able to do. We don't have to be sneaky. We don't have to be manipulative. We don't have to play mind games. Come on, somebody. We don't have to use unscrupulous methods in reference to make money, because our God is a true and living God. Amen. He owns the cattle of a thousand hills. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and all of they that dwell therein. God, our Father, owns everything. We don't have to lie or slick or cheat nobody out of nothing. Solomon had the most riches in all the earth. All the earth. Amen. Had so much riches until he said, I don't want nothing in the temple that's made out of wood that look like wood. And the Bible said he overlaid all the wood in the temple with solid, pure gold. This is what God can do. This is what God can do. God can do what he did 
with the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. He said, go and borrow every, everything from the Egyptians that they got. Everything that's worth something, borrow it from them. And you know what? The Egyptians, see, when it's time for you to be blessed, the people are going to turn, turn the blessing loose and just put it in your hand. The Bible said that God's children, the children of Israel, went to the Egyptians the night before they left and said, we want to borrow all of your valuables. And you know what they gave? They borrowed, read your Bible real good, gold and silver and jewels. Gold and silver and jewels. They gave it to them without a fight and without opposition and without, and without any kind of rusting and tussling. They gave it to them. And the next morning, the Bible says they walked out with the riches of Egypt. Walked out with the riches of evil, e Egypt, and it financed them, watch this, it financed them until they got to the border of Canaan. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. What they took out of Egypt financed them until they got to the border of Canaan. You say, Pastor Green, how you, how, you, how you figure that? Because the children of Israel never asked any tribe on the journey for anything. The only thing they asked for, one time they was going forth, and they asked the king, could we get some water out of your land? But as far as riches and wealth, they didn't have to ask or beg nobody for nothing. This is what God can do. This is what God has the ability to do. So we should never be intimidated by other people and other things that so-called are greater than us. The angel says you're going to have great opposition, but God is greater than the opposition. God is always greater than the opposition. So when you come against great opposition, and I know some of you in this time, because you've probably lost some things and you've had the downsize. Come on, somebody. Yeah. And so now you figure, well, you know, maybe I I'm just going to have to live on this level. Well, let me tell you this. If God begins to speak, you don't have to live on that level. Amen. All you got to do is be obedient unto God and whatever God is telling you to do. And there's a reason why I keep telling you what God tells you to do. I don't want you to go out from this message, amen, and say, well, I'm going to go start a business. No, it ain't. it's not about you. Let's back the train up. That's how we got that prosperity message all messed up before, amen. Uh, the prophets and evangelists and the pastors and the teachers, amen, made you believe that you had carte blanche and you could just go out and do everything and God will sanction what you do because you say it's in the name of God. No, 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 it's not going to work like that. God, just like he spoke to Zerubbabel, and God gave him the plan, and God put him on assignment, and the angel came and gave him the message, and the Bible said he built the temple because he started the foundation right. Read it. Read it. He said the reason he finished the temple is because he started the foundation right. It wasn't just talking about the physical foundation. He built that foundation because God spoke. And what we've got to realize, if God is not the foundation of what we're doing, then whatever we're building on that foundation, it will fall. Come on, somebody. But if God speaks to you to do something, you have a firm foundation. And you can build anything on it that God has told you to build. And it will stand in the midst of of everything and no matter what the economy is going through and it makes no difference whether you've lost your job you've lost your business you've lost your position you've lost your pension it makes no difference if God is in charge of what he's assigned you to do you will make it through and you will make it out I want to read the scriptures to, to, so to leave you with something that I want you to remember it's in Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, 
the 37th through the 40th verses. I want you to write these scriptures down, and I want you to, to read these scriptures. Read them at least once a month. I want you to read them. Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, the 37th through the 40th verses. And this is what it says. And because he loved our fathers, therefore he chose their seed after them and brought thee out in his sight with his mighty power out of Egypt to drive our nations from before thee greater and mightier than thou art and to bring thee in to give thee their land for an inheritance as it is this day. Know therefore this day and consider in thine heart that the Lord, he is God in heaven above and upon the earth beneath. There is none else. Thou shalt keep therefore his statutes and his commandments, which I command unto thee this day, that it go well with thee and with thy children after thee, that thou mayest prolong thy days upon the earth, which the Lord giveth thee for ever, forever. 38 verse, I want to read it again. To drive our nations from before thee greater and mightier than yourself. The Bible says never be intimidated by things and people who are greater and mightier, seem to be greater and mightier than you because God is greater than them all. It is my desire that the word of God has ministered unto you tonight, that he has encouraged you, that it has inspired you, and that you're going to have a new perspective, and you're going to gird yourself up. And some of y'all, you're going to have to shake yourself because you've been in the dumps and you've been oppressed. Come on. And you've lost your motivation. The devil is a liar. Let nothing kill your hope. Let nothing destroy your faith. Because God is greater than anything that tries to be great enough to stop you. In Jesus' name. There are people that are listening to my voice tonight. You don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I want to invite you to know him today. All you have to do is believe that he lived on the face of the earth and you have to believe that they put him on a cross. And you have to believe that the blood he shed was for the remission of the sins of mankind. You got to believe that he died on that cross and that they put him in a tomb. And on the third day, he rose from the grave with all power in his hands. And when he got up, we got up with him. So the Bible says if you profess these things with your mouth and believe in your heart that the Father did raise him from the grave, that you are saved. If you believe that today and you will confess that today, then you are saved. You need to find you a church, amen, where they're preaching the word of God and showing the love of God. We know that during the pandemic, a lot of churches are not open as of yet, but I'm quite sure that just like we are, we're working diligently to open up the church again that we may worship together as the body of Christ. Those of you who live in the vicinity of North Miami, amen, we, we are grateful and thankful that you're watching the broadcast and listening to us as we stream the word of God and we teach it and we manifest the things of God that you may get an idea of who God is here at New Vision for Christ Ministries. We urge you that when the church opens back up, amen, you can come here and fellowship. We're still not receiving, amen, the public at this time, but as once again, we are working to do so. Those of you who have been giving, we thank you for your gifts, your contributions, and your donations towards making us able to continue to reach, preach, and teach the masses about Jesus Christ and Jehovah God. Amen. Our prayer is that God will bless you 100-fold for being obedient unto him in your giving. May the Lord bless you, and may the Lord keep you, may the Lord make his face and continue to shine upon you and give you peace 
is our prayer. We are not just the church here at New Vision for Christ Ministries. We are a movement. God bless you. Love you.